Hi, it's Katie, and welcome to this gentle chair yoga class. Before we get started, uh, make sure that you have a strap handy, and if you don't have a yoga strap, just grab a towel or a bathrobe tie or a dog leash or something like that. We'll be using this later on. You can just hang it on the back of your chair for now or wherever is accessible to you. And then if you happen to be sitting in your chair and your feet dangle a little bit when your back is against the back of the chair, go ahead and grab, um, if you don't have yoga blocks, a couple books so that when you rest your back on the back of your chair in nice tall posture, that your feet are, are fully flat on a surface. So those are um, a couple of props that you might need before we get started. Okay, and then um, one more thing. If you choose, you can put on your own relaxing music. So that's up to you as well. Okay, so let's begin. So to begin sitting in your chair, I want you to close your eyes. And with the eyes closed, we're just going to do a check-in on ourself and see how we're doing. So why don't you just scan your, your body from head to toe in your chair and just see what's going on with you physically today. Right? Every day is different. It's not always the same thing that might come up. All right, and then whatever came up, came up, and let it go. And now I want you to bring your awareness more towards your, your mental body and your thinking mind. So eyes are still closed, but just noticing your thoughts lately and if they've been jumping around or if they've been focused on one particular thing or, or anything that's been going on in your mind. Just notice it without judgment. and then let that go. Now from here, one more thing, shift your focus to your heart center. And just ask yourself how you're feeling. Again, with no judgments at all, just check, how am I feeling today? And let that go. Eyes are still closed if possible. So with eyes still closed, bring yourself back into your physical body. I want you to feel the support underneath your feet, whether it's the floor, carpet, wood, yoga blocks, books. Feel it. Let your toes be soft. And just feel like the four corners of the feet are pressing into whatever supports you have underneath of you. And then bring it up a little bit to, to the pelvis and feel like your seat is very heavy into your chair. Right? That tailbone is drawing straight down into the chair. Melt your back to the back of the chair. Shoulders are back and down. So the heart is open, right? But there's also a little bit of engagement in the abdomen where the, the ribs are not shooting way out in front of you that they're gently pulling into the body too. The neck is super long, lots of length in your neck, crown of the head reaching to the ceiling or the sky. And then now that you have that beautiful posture, relax your eyes a little bit, relax your jaw, bring some softness in so that you can be firm and strong, but also soft and calm at the same time. With eyes closed, we're going to take one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart center. I want you to just feel the breath in your body and in which hand does more of the movement when you're breathing. See if you can feel that when you breathe in, the hand on your belly moves out away from you. And when you breathe out, the hand gently moves back toward your spine. So practice that a few times, inhaling to get that lower hand to move away from the body, 
and exhale as it comes back in toward the body. There's a, a something called reverse breathing in, um, and that's possible. So if this isn't making sense to you, it's possible that you are doing the opposite. So we're gonna try and train ourselves to inhale and really let the belly go, right? Coming out and exhaling it back in. It shouldn't be straining, right? Just go at your own pace. Let's just take about two or three more deep breaths like this. Good job. So keep those deep breaths going. We're just going to allow the arms to dangle by the sides. You, you're welcome to keep the eyes closed or open them at this point. We're just gonna do some shoulder rolls to begin. So we're gonna take your shoulders, take them forward to the front of your room and then up toward the ceiling, tend to the back wall and down to the floor. So roll those shoulders forward, up, back and down and go at your own pace. If you've got shoulder issues, you go to the degree that your shoulder says it feels fine. I'm getting a little bit of work, but it doesn't hurt, right? No. No pain in class. If you have a sharp shooting pain, you need to stop. Listen to the, your body and not your, your ego mind. All right, relax those shoulders down. Relax the arms. If it feels more comfortable, you can rest your palms on your legs. Otherwise, they can dangle by your sides. Doesn't matter. Check that you still have that beautiful posture. And we're going to just side bend the neck. So with a nice tall neck to start, right? Chin is parallel to the floor. Then gently let one ear drop down toward that same shoulder. And just breathe here, deep into that side of the neck that's getting the stretch. Take your time, there's no rush, right? We really wanna let that tension really start to drain out of the neck. There's no rushing. Take as much time as you need. If you are ready though to come out, slowly lift the head back up nice and gentle. And now let's take the opposite ear down to that opposite shoulder. And notice, you know, which side feels tighter. Right, there's no judgment attached to it. It just is information that we can now use to make ourselves feel better. Maybe you want to give that side a little extra TLC, a little extra stretching. Take your time on your next inhale, lift your head back up. So release the breath. All right, and now one more neck thing. I want you to keep that nice tall heart, but drop your chin to your chest. See how the back of the neck feels? We'll gently sway just a little bit in the front body. So inhaling, taking the chin over toward one shoulder. And then exhale back toward the heart. Inhale to the opposite shoulder. Exhale back to the heart. Do that one more time each side. Take your time. Once you get back to the center, Take a breath there. Inhaling as it comes, the head lifts back on top of the spine. Perfect. Okay, let's warm up a little bit more of that body, right? On your inhale breath, I want you to take your arms and sweep them over the head. If you've got shoulder issues and you can't go all the way, not a big deal. Going all, as far as you can go and maybe taking the palms to touch. So if you need to bend the elbows and that touch the palms, that's fine. So wherever you need to be, it's great. On the exhale, we'll draw the hands to the heart center, right in front of the heart. And then inhale, sweep those arms back up over your head. Big inhale. Exhale, palms at heart center. And one more like that. Inhaling, sweeping the air through the fingers. Nice reach through the ribs. Exhale, palms at heart. And then we're gonna go ahead and release the arms back down by the sides. Hold on to your chair with one of your hands. Another way to do this is to take a yoga block um, to the side. Um, I 
I don't have one right now. If you have one, that's great. We'll hold on to the chair with one arm. Check your posture. Always check that posture and then inhale your opposite arm up. All right, again, if this is too much for you, come halfway down, cactus your arm. Not a big deal. Finding that perfect spot for you, and if it feels okay, we're gonna lean toward the hand gripping the chair. So a little side lean, you can bend that elbow, or you can slide the hand down the chair leg if you feel supported. This can be a little bit or a lot. Your rib cage will tell you, and if you feel really crunched in the side that you're bending toward, that's a little clue to maybe come up a little bit. So open heart, shoulders in line with each other if possible in the same plane. You can look and gaze at the ceiling, but if it hurts your neck, don't. Just look straight ahead. All right, find your inhale to get a big oomph to come all the way back up. And then exhale, release that arm. And then take a cleansing breath at center. And then as you're ready, hold on to the chair with the other arm. Opposite arm lifts, big inhale. And exhale, starting your side lean over to the other side. Trying to keep the heart open as you move. Listen to your body, go shallow at first, and you can always deepen it as your breaths go by, little by little. Take another breath, no falling out of your chair. <laughs> Big inhale, we're gonna come all the way back up. Big exhale, to release that arm. Perfect. All right, and then I'm gonna have you scooch a couple inches forward on your chair so that you have some room between your back and the chair back. Right. I'm gonna work a little uh, spinal movement in a, in a cat cow. So you can just rest your hand on your thighs for now. Inhale, I want you to lift your heart as high as it goes, almost arching your upper back there, right? Tilting your pelvis forward. Now on the exhale breath, tuck your tailbone under, round your back. Let your chin come down to your chest in your cat pose. Perfect. Inhale, lift your heart into your cow pose, drawing those shoulders back, heart up. And then exhale, tuck it all in again, rounding into a little ball. So keep going, everyone. Inhale to lift the heart. And then exhale to tuck it in. Now we all breathe at different rates, so I don't expect us to match, right? Listen to your breath. When you inhale, you begin that back arch, and then when you exhale, you round the back. So let's go ahead and do two more at your own pace, really listening to your own breath. Take your time. The next time you exhale, finish your rounding back, come back to a flat back. We're gonna add on to that a little bit, call the dancing cat. We're gonna be lifting one knee into the, the, the chest on our exhale breath in, in our cat pose. So when you're ready, inhale, lift the heart up again, just like we did before. And then exhale, when you round your back, pull a knee into the chest and get those abs working. Inhale, release the foot, lift the heart. If that's too much, don't do it. On the exhale breath, this time opposite knee pulls in. You can use your hands for support if you need them. And so inhale, letting the foot drop. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, dancing cat with the other knee. Inhale, into your cow. Exhale, dancing cat. We got two more, one each side. Inhaling, lift the heart, tailbone tilts. Exhale, tuck the tail, pull the knee in. Run round the back, right? Inhaling, extend. And exhale. Bend it all into a little ball, pulling that knee in, and then inhaling, coming back to your flat back. See how your spine feels, if it feels okay. And then from here, we're gonna do a little twist so we can keep this space between the back and the chair for now. Let your arms come down by your sides. Big inhale, lift the arms up over the head to the degree that your shoulders allow. And then exhale, start a twist from your belly button to one side, drawing the hands down. So one hand will come to your leg and one might come to the, toward the back of the chair. Inhale, we're gonna come back out of the twist. Untwist, arms up to the sky. Exhale, twist to the other side. So opposite hands come down to the other side. Inhale, open up the heart, untwist. Exhale, twist to the other side. You know what you're doing, inhaling up and exhaling twist. 
can be a shallow twist, it can be a deep twist. Keep it going, inhaling up. The next time you twist, we're gonna hold it there. So exhale, letting the arms drop gently. Make it a very relaxed twist. Or you can make it a little deeper by walking this back hand to the middle of the chair seat behind you. Lift that heart though, and allow the belly button to take you over toward the back of the chair. Breathe as deep as you can, and if you feel shallow of breath, untwist a little bit. And just feeling calm and relaxed. And at any time a yoga gets stressful, you wanna back off, right? Stay in the moment. As you're ready, we're gonna come out of this. Big inhale, untwist the body, arms to the sky. Exhale, twist to the other side. All right, keep that tall spine, right, in the initial twist. And then when you're ready, you can keep going and going, kind of like a ripple effect from the belly button up to the top of the head. Sensitive of the neck, especially if you've had neck issues in the past, don't really try to look over that back shoulder. Just let your neck gently follow your spine. And then check your lungs right in your rib cage. Can you get the breath deep in and out of those lungs? Tricky to do in a twist, so do your best. The next inhale is gonna take us out. So find it, then inhale arms up to the sky. And exhale, relax. Perfect, so from here we're going to scooch our back back to the chair back, so you have more support for your back. And then from here, I just want us to do some hip circles to kind of wiggle out that, anything that was going on in our low back in that twist. So keep the tall spine, of course, and then circle your upper body. So to the side, to the front, to the other side, and back to center. This is when you discover if you have a squeaky chair or not. <laughs> All right, we're gonna switch directions, go the other way. Switch directions of your hip circles. All right, come all the way back to center. Take a cleansing breath, see how you're feeling. Great, and then again, back is supported. We're just gonna do uh, some marching in place, so nothing crazy, but this will still use your, your abdominals, your hip flexors, um, your quads, so we're gonna just lift one foot and lower, and lift the other foot and lower. So just march in place. You don't have to match it with your breath, but warming up those hips, belly, the legs. All right, now I want you to relax your feet, relax your legs, take a breath. And then we do some, uh, some toe raises here. So keep the heels grounded into your blocks or the floor, whatever your feet are on. And we're just gonna inhale, lift the toes, uh, keeping the heels into the support as high as you can, flexing those feet, and then exhale to relax. So inhale, lifting those toes nice and high. Exhale, relax. Use your own breath. If we don't match up, that's fine. You inhale to lift, you exhale to lower. Do two more at your own pace. All right, when you finish those second ones, take a breath and a, and a break for your ankles. We're going to do the opposite now. We're gonna lift the, the heels and let the, the balls of the feet stay grounded on your blocks and your floor. So when you're ready, inhale, lift the heels up. And exhale, relax. Inhale and lift the heels up, engaging those calf muscles. Exhale, relax. Keep it going. We've got two more. And then relax those heels after that last one. Take a breath. Okay, and then from here, what I want us to do is extend one leg straight out. If this is too much for you to have the leg straight, keep a bend in the knee, okay, either way. So if you're with a bent knee or straight leg, I want you to circle that ankle joint. And then circle the opposite direction. And then flex through the foot. 
push through the heel, lift your toes towards your shin, and then relax the leg. Take a breath. Great, let's do the other leg. Extend your opposite leg up. And again, if you need to bend the knee, bend the knee. You can even hold onto the leg if you need to, right? So we're going to circle the ankle. And then switch directions of your ankle circles. And then as you're ready, keep the foot in a flex position, toes toward the shin, heel pushing away from you. Really stretch through that calf and back of the leg. One more breath. And then relax the leg. And if you can, just, you know, uh, bounce your feet up, up and down off your supports. Just get some of that tension out of your legs. All right, perfect. Now, I'd like you to take your arms out to a T position. Okay, and then we're going to bend the elbows so that you can give yourself a big hug. So go ahead and wrap your hands like they're going to reach for the backs of your shoulders. Hope if you can't reach them, it's not a big deal, right? But getting as far back as you can with those, those hands on your shoulders. And just breathing here. So feeling a stretch through the back body and compressing the arms uh, for, for lymph circulation. Now, this is perfect if you want to stay right here. If you want a little extra and you want to move into eagle arms, keep the elbows as they are, but lift the forearms so maybe the backs of the hands can touch or even the fronts of the, the hands can touch into eagle arms. If that's too much, don't worry about it. So just breathing here. If you are in the full expression of eagle arms, draw your shoulders down and possibly lift your elbows slightly. And if you're in eagle arms, you're gonna release and go ahead and grab the shoulder blades again like we did earlier. Everyone, notice which arm is on the top and which arm is on the bottom because we're gonna have to do the opposite next. When an inhale comes, open those arms nice and wide, and exhale, we're gonna stretch them way back behind us. And then inhale again, and exhale, crossing the opposite arm on top. Okay, other arm is on top. It should feel a little different. And this is perfect. You wanna stay right here and feel the stretch as you are. If you feel you can handle more, Lift the hands and the forearms straight to the ceiling, possibly taking the palms together. They might not touch and that's okay. You can always grab pinky to, to thumb, backs of the hands, or you could even grab like a, a towel or a strap here. So finding the shoulders to sink as the elbows might lift a hair, just slightly, slightly. You'll feel that in your shoulder blades. Work on that yoga breath, nice and smooth and calm. Relax your jaw, relax your face. And we're gonna release those hands, taking them back to the shoulders. Meet everyone there. And then big inhale, open up those arms and stretch them way back behind you. And then let the hands just rest down by the sides, taking a breath. Right, we're going to do um, a few hand movements here. So what I'll want us to do is just take our hands to face each other. And so this would be the first move, it's straight. I'm gonna call it straight, straight hands, right? And then we're gonna bend at this bottom knuckle. So we're gonna try and bend keeping the fingers straight. I know it might not work for some of us, and that's okay, it's pretty tricky to do, right? So here's your bent. And then from bent, we're gonna do four in a row. So it's straight, bent, and then we're gonna move into claws. And so the claws are when we take the, the pads of the fingers down into the, the top of the palm here. So it looks like little claws. So it's some claws. And then we're gonna do fists. So gentle fists, tuck, making fists with your hands and tucking the thumb on the outside of the hand. Okay, so that, those are our four moves. Here we go, are you ready? I'm gonna face you guys so you can so we're gonna go straight, 
bend, claws, fist. Straight, bend, claws, fist. Straight, bend, claws, fist. One more. Straight, bend, claws, fist. Great. Now shake out those hands. Shake, shake, shake. And then relax. So at this point, if you um, are up for it, we're going to do some standing postures to work on our balance. And if you are not up for it, you can stay seated in your chair. So I'm going to come behind my chair. So go ahead and take a minute to get up and get behind your chair. I'm going to move my forward a little bit. Okay, so you've got your chair here. We're going to just start in our tree pose, our Vrikshasana to start. So what I'll have you do is hold on to your chair with both hands, but then bend one knee. I'm going to come up so you can see. Bend one knee and open at the hip joint. And see, both of my feet are still on the floor, and you can still be holding on to your chair. So everyone's different in their tree pose, right? You've got an open hip, and most of your weight is on your straight leg. And it's up to you to play with how much balance you want to work on today. So if you choose to, you can take those toes of the bent leg off the ground to rest on your, your inner ankle, your calf muscle. Some people can go all the way above the knee into the inner thigh. You pick your perfect spot for your tree and find a gazing point, maybe on the floor, out in front of you. And just holding here, if it gets too much, come back to your regular standing posture in mountain pose. Just breathe. If you've been practicing tree for quite a while, you can always play with taking a hand off the chair, maybe out to the side or at your heart. If you've never done tree before, hold on to the chair, right? If you've been practicing with me before and you've, if you've done your chair with both hands off, it's your discretion. Just be very careful grabbing onto the chair if you need it. All right, we're gonna release chair. That was a long time. Did I say chair? Tree. We're gonna release tree pose, holding onto the chair. Relax, bend those knees a little bit. Take a moment to yourself. No judgment, right? We're just having fun in tree. So we're gonna bend the opposite knee and open at that hip. And we can keep the big toes on the mat. Like I said before, right? You can stay just like this. Or you can lift the foot a little higher. Maybe even into the inner thigh if you're comfortable and you have the flexibility to do so. so wherever you are is perfect. Remember, holding onto the chair the whole time is fine as long as you're pushing yourself just a little bit. Like you want to make sure you're working your balance, that this is not too easy for you, but it's also not too hard. You've got to find your perfect spot for that day, right, in that moment in time. Take as much time as you need. If you're enjoying tree, you can stay as long as you'd like. When you are ready to come down, go ahead, come back out of your tree pose and stay behind your chair. I'm gonna move mine sideways so you can see, but you go ahead and stay right behind your chair there and work on mountain pose, right? Your shoulders are back and down, your feet are parallel to each other, sides are engaged, and the knees are not locked, right? Keep those knees with a, a gentle bend or engage your quadriceps. All right, so we're gonna do a little uh, a standing knee breath here. So making sure you are far away from your chair, enough so that when you, you bend your knee, we're gonna lift our knee up. It doesn't hit the back of your chair. I guess it depends what kind of chair you have, right? So when you're ready, rooting down through one standing leg that's gonna stay stationary, then inhale, opposite knee comes up in front of you, only as high as your body says it can go, and exhale, we're gonna take it back to the floor. So same leg, inhaling up, Exhaling, release. Inhaling up. Exhaling, release. Two more. Five breaths here. Inhaling up. 
Exhale, release. Last one, inhaling up. Exhale, back to mountain. Take a breath. And let's do the other leg. So as you're ready, you know you've got your hands on your chair if you need them. Inhale, opposite knee lifts up toward the chair. And exhale, release. Inhaling up. Exhale, release. So use your own breath. We've got three more to go. Five breaths total, inhaling up. Exhale, release, two more. Great, and now coming back to your mountain pose. From here, wherever you are on, on your mat here, stay holding onto your chair. We're gonna step one leg a couple feet back, right? So I want you to have your feet at least hip distance wide apart. So the front toes are facing your chair and the back toes might be turned out about 45 degrees. And now everybody's different. So um, it can be nice and shallow, it can be wide, wherever you feel comfortable, where we're gonna get our hips to face the chair. We're still holding on to that chair and we're gonna straighten both legs. Pyramid pose if you know it. All right, so both legs are straight, back is straight, shoulders down, belly in, all that good stuff. Our same mountain pose alignment. And then we're just gonna tilt forward at the hip hinges. So we start to feel a stretch in the back of the legs, mostly in the front leg, but I know that some people feel it in that back calf sometimes. So shoulders away from ears, we're just folding toward the front of the chair. You go only as far as your body says, okay, that's the spot. So holding there and breathing. Whichever leg is forward, try to bring that hip back behind you a little bit. We'll increase the stretch, maybe a hair. And, and check those knees, make sure they're not locked. You're engaging those quadriceps. Let's take one more breath in our pyramid pose. Now root down through both feet, especially that back foot as you inhale up and use your arms if you need them. Perfect, so let's switch feet. So back foot steps front, front foot steps back. Right, so have lots of width between your feet so you have room for your hips, okay? Holding onto the chair, big inhale, legs are straight. We're gonna fold forward again at those hips. And then where do you feel it? Right, everybody's different, but we're gonna try and feel like that, that front leg hip moves back a little bit and the back leg hip moves forward a little bit. Ground through both feet, big inhale to come back up. And then stepping that back foot to meet the front foot. So you're still in your mountain pose. We're gonna do one more standing pose before we sit back down. Okay, we're gonna do our, our supported down dog here. So we're gonna hold onto the chair. Some people can flip the chair around and use the seat if they can go lower, but this is a little bit more, more gentle. We're gonna walk our feet back until our body makes a 90 degree angle or somewhere near there, right? Whatever your body can handle. We're just moving back so you have a nice stretch in that entire spine. Feet are, are still hip distance apart. You can almost feel like your heart and your chest fall through your arms, right? And, and watch those knees, they don't lock. Just breathe here in a nice restorative downward facing dog. As you're ready, you can look down at your mat and walk your feet forward toward your chair. You're back up tall. And we're gonna come back to sit. So take a minute, take as much time as you need to come back around to sit in your chair. I'm gonna fix my chair here. Also notice my mat got crunchy. All right, so coming back to sit in your chair. When you do come back to sit, we're gonna go ahead and take the legs apart into a, about a 45 degree angle. So if you have blocks or books, go ahead and take those with you for your feet, right? So that you can still take your back against the back of the chair. Perfect, okay, so here we are. We're just gonna 
acclimate, right? You don't need to rush into the next pose. Take a breath. Check your posture. Close your eyes for a moment. Notice how you're feeling. Take inventory, just like you did in the beginning of class. All right, and as you're ready, reopen those eyes. Nice deep breaths. We do some, some shoulder dips here. So you're gonna you know, sit nice and tall and, and your hands are about near your knees and your thighs. You wanna lift the heart on an inhale. On the exhale, we're gonna take one shoulder toward opposite knee. It doesn't have to be too far whatever you can handle. And then inhale, we're gonna come back up and do the other side. So opposite shoulder, you can, almost like you're pushing that leg away from you. Inhale, lift to that nice tall spine. Exhale, shoulder dip. Inhaling up, exhaling to dip. Keep going at your own breath. Inhale, center, exhale, coming down. So it's not only a forward fold, but there's a little twist in there too, right? So you're getting shoulders, hips, back, lots of stuff going on in this shoulder dip. Keep it going one more. And then coming all the way back up. Perfect. All right, so you've got that beautiful spine, that nice tall spine. We're gonna take one elbow, I want you to bend it and just lean it out onto that same thigh. Right, so most of you can push into your thigh with your forearm, so you have length in the, that rib cage, shoulders back and down. And then if it's okay in your shoulder, this opposite arm is gonna come up, come up to the sky. Just kind of leaning out into a little mini side lean toward that bent knee. Breathing here into your side angle. And then as you're ready, we're gonna come back out of the pose, let that top arm come down, take a breath at center. Here we go, other elbow bend, so you can take that forearm to that same thigh. Press into it so you have length in both sides of your rib cage, heart is open. An opposite arm will come back up to the thigh. If it's up for it, right, your shoulder will tell you. And just moving into like a little side lean. Stretching, stretching, move your breath in between your ribs. Big inhale to lift up and exhale, release. Perfect. So from here, we'd like you to grab onto your chair with your hands. Okay, so you've got your chair, shoulders are back and down. We're gonna move into a forward fold. So heart is lifting, back is straight. We're just gonna come forward in the hip hinges. See how this feels. And everybody's different, we, we can all go, maybe some of us can go deeper, some of us more shallow, wherever you are is perfect. So shoulders back and down. If you feel like you could go deeper, you could inch your hands up the back of the chair a little bit, but be careful. And if you have, you know, blood pressure issues and stuff, we keep the head above the heart. And just breathe. On the next inhale, come back all the way up. Releasing your hands. Getting there, getting there. And we're gonna do one more wide-legged pose. We're just gonna do our hip circles that we did earlier, but now the legs are apart. So tall spine again and circle those hips. So you're moving and rocking the weight around on your pelvis, that's all. Your upper body moving in a circle. Just feeling all the kinks. Leaving, right? Ironing out all those kinks. Let's switch directions of your hip circles. Go the other way. And then come back to center. Perfect. Now we're going to take the feet back to hip distance apart. So grab your blocks. If you have your blocks, take them with you. All right, we are back at center with hip, feet hip distance. Now is when I'm gonna ask you to grab the strap that you have hanging on the back of your chair. So grab hold of the strap. We're gonna wrap it around the bottom of one of your feet. Okay, 
So we're gonna wiggle it to the ball of the foot, right? Not directly in the center of the foot, just a little higher than that. Make sure your back is supported, your shoulders are down, and then we're gonna extend the leg out straight like we did earlier, but now we have the support of the strap, which is nice. You don't have to hold it up all with your here, hip flexors and your abs. You can use your arms here. So go ahead and, and feel like the toes come toward you and the heel moves away from you. And you're just getting a good stretch through the calves, maybe into the hamstring as well. And then breathe here. That's it. Relax shoulders. Now we're gonna move right into a pigeon pose from here. So there are a lot of variations of this. What I'd like us to do is kind of bend the knee, right? And then we're gonna open this hip. So some of us are just gonna rest, you can even rest your, your foot on a, on a block or some supports. I can, um, if this doesn't fall over on me, there we go. <laughs> so that you can rest your foot if you can't get the foot higher um, up to the chair. So this is a nice gentle version. If you need to, if you can come a little higher, we're gonna try and get this foot, and you can use your arm strength to come to the seat of the chair or even onto the opposite thigh into a, a full pigeon. That's too much, don't do it. It's not worth it, right? Make sure your knee feels healthy and safe. Everything should feel okay in here. The only thing you should feel is something in this, this hip glute area. And so again, if this is too high, you can just hold the foot on the block or just hold it down here. So find your perfect spot in your pigeon, breathe, You are good. Now, if you choose to increase the stretch, keeping a straight spine, you would fold your upper body forward toward the leg. But some of you might not need that. Some of you might, up to you. Your leg will tell you, right, your hip area. Breathe into it. Another couple breaths this is a great one to hold for sciatica, for having stuff in the hips. And your body will get used to it, right? The longer you hold, the easier it will get. Well, I shouldn't say that, <laughs> not necessarily. But the, the deeper you will get, that's for sure. All right, when you're ready, inhale yourself up if you did add the fold, if you didn't, no big deal. And then we'll move into a twist from here. So you could keep your leg where it is if this is comfortable enough for you. If you can cross the leg like you're just sitting in a chair, you don't really need the strap at this point, but have it close by. Just sitting nice and tall with our leg crossed. Right? And then we're just gonna walk our hands toward that top leg. So back behind us and twisting, if you can take your hand to the back of the chair and twist here. So just a little deeper twist than we did earlier. Heart lifts, belly squeezes toward the back of the chair. And then very gently untwist your belly back to the front. Uncross the leg. See how you're feeling. We're definitely going to have to to get those kinks out later, but for now, let's do the other leg. So remember, both feet are on the floor at this point, but we're gonna take the strap around the bottom of the other foot. So do those three poses on this leg. So as you're ready, hold, support your back with the chair, shoulders down, straighten the leg out using your strap. Again, it's not right in the middle of your foot, it's a little higher, so you can use that, that strap to pull the, the top of the foot towards you. Heel pushes away. Breathe deep into wherever you're feeling the stretch. Okay, everyone, are you ready? We're going to move into our pigeon pose. So your version, you're going to bend the knee. Open the hip out to the side. You could literally just hold onto the foot and the strap here. 
If this is too high, rest your foot lower onto the block. Or if it's not enough, you can take it all the way up to the opposite leg or the chair seat. It's wherever is good for you. Take a minute to let your, your hips adjust. Flex your feet if you have knee issues especially. See how this feels. If you feel fine here, then you can add your fold. Nice and slow, don't push it, right? Little by little. Every day is different. Go deep into the spot that you feel it. Let calmness wash over your face, your temples, your jaw. And then we'll move into our twist. So if you did add a fold to this pigeon, come back out first. And then cross that leg over the other leg or wherever you can go in your twist. You don't need your strap anymore. Heart is lifted. We're just gently walking the hands toward that top leg, twisting the belly, taking your back hand wherever it can go on the back of the chair. And then as you're in your twist, just notice what you're feeling, right? Where do you feel what? Can you visualize in your mind's eye your lungs filling and emptying? Take your time, the next inhale will slowly unwind you out of your twist. And uncross those legs. Great, we're gonna take a hold of the back of the chair with the hands, just like we did earlier in our forward fold, but now the legs are hip distance. So heart is lifting. Nice posture coming forward at your hip hinges into your forward fold, holding onto the back of the chair. Maybe coming a little deeper, hands up the back of the chair, up to you. And then inhale, come back up center. Releasing the arms and take a few hip circles here just to make sure everything is okay. So, right, so coming around in the chair. And then switch directions, about three more on the other side. Yep, my chair is definitely squeaky. All right, coming back to center, sitting nice and tall, make sure your back is supported. We're gonna do a couple eye exercises before Shavasana and relaxation pose. So again, make sure you're comfortable. We're just gonna do um, some eye clock if you've done this with me before. Uh, you know it's coming. If not, I'm going to walk us through it. No big deal. So relax though in your chair. You have that nice posture. That you're comfortable. And I want you to take your eyeballs to 12 o'clock on an imaginary clock. And we're going to gently stretch those eyes. Move them to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I want you to center your eyes, then close them and take a deep breath. And then reopen your eyes. We're gonna do that one more time in the opposite direction. So go back up to 12. You know, this shouldn't be painful, but you should literally feel a stretch of your eyes here, right? So we're going up to 12, let's go to 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, one, 12. Center the eyes, close the eyes and take a deep breath. Keep the eyes closed, but I want you to take your palms and rub them together, create some heat between your hands. 
All right, and then once you've done that, cup your hands over your eyes. And now your, your eyes can either stay closed or open in the darkness of your palms. And just, you know, letting your eyes revitalize, you know, soaking in that energy from your hands, which comes from your heart. Just allowing your eyes to relax. I'm sure they are bombarded with many things throughout, throughout the day. It's time to just let them soften. If they're open, go ahead and close them and letting your palms come to rest on your thighs, palms face up. And we'll move into relaxation. If there are any postures or stretches that you didn't get to do and you want to go ahead and do those on your own right now, go ahead. And when you're done or if you are ready, we're going to move into Shavasana. Relaxation pose. And try to let your whole body melt. It's pretty tricky in a chair. If you're at home and you have a couch or a bed nearby and you rather do Shavasana there, that is completely fine. If you're comfortable getting up and down off the floor, you can also do that. Wherever you are, once you do, bring your awareness to your feet. And allow your feet to feel very soft. All effort is gone in holding the feet in the air, standing on the feet, they're just relaxed. Now bring that softness up to the ankles, to the lower legs. Relax the knees as well. Let the knees soften. And then relax the, the upper legs, the thighs, the hamstrings, the quads, even the femur bones heavy into the chair. Relax the pelvis, relax the hips. Relax your entire back from the low back to the mid, to the upper back, including those shoulder blades, even the spine relaxes. Relax the abdomen and the chest. And for a moment, visualize all those organs inside your torso working perfectly, calmly, efficiently, without stress. Now relax your shoulders and your upper arms all the way down to your elbows. Relax your forearms, your wrists, the backs of your hands, and the palms of your hands. Relaxing every finger and fingernail. Relax your neck, the back of your head, the top of your head, your forehead, your eyebrows, relax your nose, your eyes and their sockets feel soft, your cheeks are soft, your ears feel like they could be melting, the mouth is relaxed, the chin and the jaw. Even the tongue in the mouth is soft. I'll stay here with you for a few moments in relaxation pose.
you are welcome to stay here as long as you like. If you need to relax a little bit longer, I completely understand. But for those of you who are ready to move on with the day, begin to just notice the breath in the body. Notice where it flows, right in the nose, down the throat, to the lungs, and then it traces its way back out again. If you choose, you can deepen the breath a little bit. And then bring awareness to your physical body and feeling the support underneath you, feeling the clothes on your body, the temperature of the air, And then notice uh, how you're feeling again. And looking back on this last hour or so, finding a positive feeling that you may have encountered, even if it's just calmness of deep breathing, whatever it is, know that you can continue to bring it with you the rest of your day. And only when you're ready, you take as much time as you need, you might start to wiggle fingers and toes. You can stretch any way that you like, stretching your neck, whatever you need. And at some point, we'll just join our hands at our heart center. Just a slight bow to the hands to acknowledge your, your own spirit and the spirit of others, of course. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.